Today's class is called, Can You Not Only Believe, But Can You See the Spirit of Yah? i say it again. Can you not only believe, but can you see the Spirit of Yah? Because believing is one thing and seeing is another. You need them both to be able to see the hand of the Most High. Um, I want to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Shem, Hamashiach, Yahweh giving thanks to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by him. All praise to the Most High, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can't praise him enough. Give him all the glory and all the praise by Shem, Hamashiach, Yahweh uh, This is another big discussion about belief. Uh, we all understand the first part of having faith, and that is to believe. That is the first part about having faith. But there's a lot of people who don't have faith. There's a lot of people who don't see spiritual things. There's a lot of people who see spiritual things that don't realize that they're spiritual things. They're, they doubt themselves. And you cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. They don't go together. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. And so if uh, you're out and about with a bunch of people, and you see something that looks unfamiliar to you, that spiritual coming from the invisible into the visible. Most of the time, you see it, and they'll see it, but five seconds later, they won't know what they saw, and then they'll start doubting what they saw. And then they'll start thinking that you're crazy. That's the way the most I got it. And so that was the same thing with Hamashiach when he was on the earth. The miracles that he did, people saw and later forgot just that quick. People saw the things and forgot. People saw the things and convinced themselves to not believe what they saw. And so that's why you have to understand that belief comes first. You have to have the belief before you can see spiritual things, or else you won't see them at all, even though you see them. Let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 13. For the Most High made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. Who made death? Man made death. We brought death upon ourselves. We brought it on ourselves. You get it? We broke the system. We broke the mold. We did something that we were not supposed to do. And then the Most High had an entity to sit in darkness with those who want to be in darkness, which is Satan. For the Most High made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things, that they might have their being, and their generations of the world were helpful. And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. The kingdom of death really shouldn't be on the earth. Adam and Eve, they broke the mold. They broke the system by doing something that angels would never do. Angels are not disobedient. Man is disobedient. Man brought disobedience within the world. Okay? Uh, for righteousness is immortal. For ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it, their friend, they consumed it not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. We created this madness. We weren't made to do this, but we did it. Okay? We went rogue. We went haywire. All we needed was just a little influence to do wrong, and we broke the mold. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter and verse 11.
For whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain, their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. This is what happened. So Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and they, they pulled death upon us. This is in Solomon chapter 1, verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life, and pull not upon yourself destruction with the works of your hands. This is what Adam and Eve did. They pulled destruction upon themselves. So this is where we are today. When you pull destruction on yourself, you can't see properly out. And this is why a lot of our people cannot see today, because all they know is destruction. All they know is pain and error and suffering, you know, and this is why following the light gives us understanding of the spirit. I want to go to um, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. All right, so did Adam and Eve have faith? This thing started after the garden. Did they have faith? For them to be disobedient, did they really have faith? You know what I mean? This thing really started after the garden of Eden. We had to earn our way back to the Father by what? By believing in the Father. Now, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. The conversation throughout the Bible is about faith. Every time an angel visited one of the most highest people, it was regarding faith. The more faith we have, we should be more obedient. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of the most high is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. All right? This is one of the problems Today, a lot of our brothers and sisters doubt the Bible. They doubt the scriptures. Some people don't believe Paul's writings. Some people don't believe Timothy's writings. Some people don't even believe in Yahweh Shai. Some people don't even believe that Moses pulled out his arm out of his cloak and his hand was leprous as snow. And he put his arm back in his cloak and it was its natural color, which was probably brown or dark, dark black. Some people don't believe any of this stuff, okay? And they heap itching ears to them, and then they believe things of unbelief. Proverbs 30 and 5, every word of the Most High is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in him. This is what we have to master. We have to understand that every word is pure. No matter where we go, we have to master this part. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. I'm just setting the foundation. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22, verse 18. And if we had read Proverbs 30 and 6, it says the same thing as this. Uh, Revelation 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. See that? And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now, there's a, a lot of congregations out there that take books out of this book. There's a lot of congregations out there who change the words of this book. How many editions do we have? We have a lot of editions. And King James, the King James Version, is probably one of the best forms that we have versus the NIV and all these new Bibles that are coming out, the Woman's Bible, you know, the Man on Man Bible. we got all types of Bibles now, and they're just watering down the word. Okay, they're watering it down. They're removing words, putting new words. They're changing even the commandments. I don't know if y'all know that. They're even changing the commandments. So they're bringing doubt 
into a lot of our brothers and sisters' minds. But the most I created all things, right? All things. We have to understand that all this stuff was for a reason, right? We have to search for the truth. That's what the Father told us in the beginning. So we must believe that the covenants that he left us, uh, like the new covenant and the old covenant, right? The old covenant, the new covenant. But the new covenant, some brothers take out the book of Acts. Acts is a part of the new covenant. Uh, The book of Hebrews is part of the new covenant. Some brothers take out the book of Hebrews. Don't ask me why they do it. Lack of belief. Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Most High forbid. Yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. The whole purpose of us being in the truth is to overcome wickedness. Overcome wickedness and to be obedient in the law, statutes, and commandments. That is a whole duty of mankind. I'll put it to you this way. That is a whole duty of man. So now we're going to go through the scriptures and see how can we see and how can we hear. We know that the Most High created all things. He created the storms. I mean, how many people you know can see? that the Most High created these things. The Most High created all things. He created animals. I mean, in the book of Baruch, he talks about, uh, let's go to the book of Baruch real quick. Let's look at some of the things that he created, right? Because what we're about to read is what is actually in Genesis. It's just more in depth, Genesis chapter 1. Uh, Baruch chapter 6, this is, these are things that people can see. These are the things that they can see with their eyes. And this should be enough to let them know that the Most High created it from the beginning. Baruch chapter 6, verse 60. For sun, moon, and stars, people can see the sun, they can see the moon, they can see the stars, being bright, why is it bright? So you can see it, and sent to do their offices are obedient. And we're supposed to keep track of the what? The new moon to know when the new month comes in. These are things that we can see with our eyes. 61. In like manner, the lightning, when it breaketh forth, is easy to be seen. We can see the lightning. And at the same manner, the wind bloweth in every country. People still don't know who created these things. When you watch the news, they don't even give the most high praise for the storms and the winds on the Weather Channel. They say Mother Nature. And they always talk about it like it's bringing destruction. How about saying the most high is replenishing the earth again? for the next season. Why not talk good about the Father? Verse 62, and when the Most High commanded the clouds to go over the whole world, they do as they are bidden. We can see the clouds. We can see them moving. Verse 63, and the fire is sent from above to consume hills and woods. Do it as it is commanded. We saw it about four or five years ago. The hills of California was catching on fire. Then we saw it on the East Coast where the hills over there was catching on fire. So who did that? The Most High did it. But these are like unto them neither in show nor power. People don't even understand why it happened. They take it for granted. Everything the Most High does, these people, these heathen, our people in the Gentile state of mind, take it for granted. Verse 64, wherefore it is neither to be supposed nor said, that they are gods, Mother Nature. That's another form of another god. Seeing they are able neither to judge causes nor to do good unto men, nor therefore that they are no gods from them not, for they can neither curse nor bless kings. The Most High does all these things. Neither can they show signs in the heavens among the heathen, nor shine as the sun, nor give light as the moon. The beasts are better than they, for they can get under a covert and help themselves. The beasts even rejoice when it rains. I hear the birds, I went outside walking in the rain this morning. The birds were out there chirping. 
They were happy, playing in the rain. Remember, the Most High created not death. To be spiritual, to believe, is to see spiritual things. But man can't even understand that. Exodus chapter 4. So the Most High created all things for a reason. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me. Belief has to come first. You've got to believe. Here's Moses talking about they won't believe. He's telling the Most High, these people ain't going to believe me. He says, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Most High have not appeared unto you. And the Most High said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. The Most High said, I'm going to take the simple things and make them see spiritual things. Instead of looking at the sun, moon, and stars and understanding the, blood, the, the love that the Most High has given us, he said, I'm going to do something simple for him. Verse 4, and the Most High said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Most High, thy power of their fathers, the Most High, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob have appeared unto you. And the Most High said furthermore unto him, put now thine hand in thy bosom, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Now pull up a picture of a leprous hand. He said leprous as snow, snow being the color of white. I don't know snow being of any other color. Even in the mud, snow is still white. All right, verse 7. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. His other flesh was a dark skin because he looked like an Egyptian. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So here's all these signs that the Most High is showing the children of Israel so they can see. So they can see what? So they can see spiritual things. With all that, the children of Israel still to this day are known for being bickering, backbiting Israelites that were in the wilderness. After seeing all these miracles, here we are thousands of years later, and we know the attitudes of the Israelites from the wilderness, being hard-headed. But here the Most High is having this talk with Moses, and he's sending them into the midst of Israel, into Egypt, showing not only the children of Israel, but also the power of the Most High before Pharaoh, and showing that the power of Israel is stronger then the power of Egypt. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. It reads, Wallace, it is said, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? All these people was grieving Moses, giving them problems because of their unbelief. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. All those miracles he did, They didn't believe. Isn't that amazing? Those we see that they were uh, privileged to see these things, right, of the spirit without truly believing. A lot of our people were able to escape. A lot of them didn't truly believe. 
They saw the ten plagues right before their eyes, and for a lot of them, all they had to do was follow the few that believed in Egypt to save their lives. That's all they had to do, just follow the few. Like when they was putting blood on the on the front door, the angel of death would pass over. A lot of people just followed the instructions. You know, people get scared when things are going down. When COVID happened, people was locked in their houses. I have never seen it in my lifetime where I could get on the freeway. There ain't nobody else on the freeway. People was following suit. They were doing the same thing everybody else was doing. Fear. Many people were saved because they was listening. Stay at home. Wear a mask. You know, stay away from people that are coughing. A lot of people were spared during this big epidemic. But many of them really didn't believe the plagues or what was going on. Some people were still going out there, no mask on. People was coughing on them. They was catching the cough and dying. People was dying over a cough. So just like the children of Israel, the children of Israel, they were in fear of the Most High for the heat of the moment. The heat of the moment, man. But they wasn't in the truth for the long haul. Okay, when they walked through the Red Sea, that was a temporary belief for the heat of the moment. In the wilderness, with all the miracles, many people did not believe. They didn't believe. Moses throwing the, the branch into the poisonous water for them to drink later. They didn't truly believe that. They were just happy to drink the water, even though they saw the great miracles. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 29. It's going to be the same way again this time. The most I had serious mercy for the children of Israel leaving Egypt. He wanted to show his power, but the people did just like Adam and Eve. They brought death upon themselves. Deuteronomy chapter 29, that's why we got to be very careful when the next big epidemic comes or pandemic and stay in the scriptures. Be obedient. We got to be obedient. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 4. Yet the most I have not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. So a lot of our people are still following the heathen. Yet the most I have not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you. And thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. It, in other words, the Stacy Adams, the Nikes, <laughs> never wore out. They had shoes that did not wear out. The Lane Bryant clothes never wore out. This was a sign that if they saw this, they couldn't understand or believe that they didn't believe at all. And this is why they perished in the wilderness. That was a sign for their shoes not to wear out. That was a sign for the clothes not to wear out. That should have told them. The most I ain't going to let you wear out. All you got to do is be obedient. I ain't going to let you wear out. I'm going to take care of you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3. Let's go there again. Imagine that. Imagine your shoes never wearing out. Most of us throw away our shoes because of the soles they wear out. But imagine your shoes never wearing out. And they was walking over rocks and thorns and Everything, man. You know. Uh, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. And it reads, But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Who was that? Moses was grieved. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They couldn't enter into the land of milk and honey because of unbelief. Romans 14 and verse 23. Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth 
is damned if he eat. I'll read that again. And he that doubteth, he that is an unbeliever, he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. But whatsoever is not of faith is sin. This ain't talking about eating a pork sandwich. This ain't talking about eating a shrimp sandwich, okay, saying I got faith. It's not what it's talking about. This ain't got nothing to do with food. So what is he talking about eating? Is it food? No. It is the word that is food. The word of the most high is food. Look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of the Most High is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what is food? What is he talking about, eat and drink? It's not talking about tangible food. This is talking about something spiritual. Let's read on. Verse 18. For he that in these things serveth Mashiach is acceptable to the Most High and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. What makes for peace? Keeping his commandments. How do we edify brothers and sisters? By edifying them through the law, statutes, and commandments. It's the only way we can edify them. So the things that we are supposed to eat and drink is not food in itself. We have law, statutes, and commandments. We have a dietary law. So why would you eat something that's not pertaining to obedience. Let's see what he's talking about. It's metaphoric, but it's also a similitude. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. The most I speak in spiritually. The belly is the mind. The food is the role. What is the role? The scriptures. Remember, these scriptures didn't come in a book like we have it today. They were all scrolls, and you would roll that scroll up. And so he would give him a roll, and it was filled with the word of the Most High, which is the scriptures, and he told him to eat it, meaning to devour it in your mind, to study it, to understand it is to eat. Then did I eat it? And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Like I said, to go to a comedy show. Comedy means comida in Spanish, which is to eat. Comedy. You go to comedy shows to laugh, to digest the joke. So to eat is comida, which is not necessarily food. It's talking about your mind. Can you digest what the Most High is explaining? Can you digest his words, his understanding of the scriptures? The Most High saying, eat it. Eat the whole thing. Eat this whole book. And when you eat it, it's going to be like honey in your belly. It's going to be sweet. This is what he's saying to us. He's conveying okay. that this word is sweet. Verse 4, and he said unto me, son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel. And speak with my words unto them. If it's going to be sweet by you digesting his word, what is it going to be to the children of Israel? It's going to be sweet. What do you give children when they're sick? Do you just give them straight medicine, or do you add a little honey to it to make them take it? The most I'm saying that this book is sweet. It's going to be like honey. Okay, A little honey in the medicine always goes down properly. But medicine just straight in the mouth? It's going to be bitter. In this particular case, it's going to be bitter once it gets in your stomach, not going down, because you're going to have to understand that you get this truth, everybody ain't going to want it, and it's going to be a fight sometimes. Let's go to the book of John. you got to have faith and belief to study this word. You got to believe in what you're reading. The book of John, chapter 1. The book of John, chapter 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the word was with the Most High, and the word was the Most High. So who was this word? Let's read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, verse 4. And it reads, this is an apocrypha. For they, who are today the Israelites, were worthy to be deprived of light. So they were deprived of the light. It says, and imprisoned in darkness, who had kept the suns shut up. And this is going on today. By whom the uncorrupt light of the law was to be given unto the world. So who was this uncorrupt light of the law? which was supposed to be given to the world. Let's go back to John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. This is the uncorrupt word that was supposed to be given to the world. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with the Most High. And the word was the Most High. The same was in the beginning with the Most High. So there's something that's with him. The Most High ain't by itself. He has something that he created that's with him. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So the Most High had spoken a word, and this word formed a what? An image. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This is what we just read in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 14. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So who was this word? This is what we have to get the understanding of. So the word was living. It was something similar to food, but more than food. This food was with the most high. It was the visible image of the most high, right? But it wasn't food. It was a different type of food. It was a food that you have to understand, a food that you have to digest. Let's go to Second Ezra's. Chapter 4. Let's substantiate this. Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 4 in the Apocrypha. Let's read 1 through 4. <clears throat> this is Ezra speaking with the angel. It says, And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer and said, Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High. Don't we all do that? We're all trying to comprehend how the Most High is going to come back. When we recite the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we're trying to understand when he comes back, what's going to happen? How he's going to do it? When is he coming back? And this is what Ezra is doing. Verse 3, then said I, yea, my power. And he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth Three similitudes before thee, whereof if thou canst declare me one, I will show you also the way that thou desire to see. Because Ezra was trying to see what was going to happen. He was trying to see what? Spiritual things. And I shall show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. Even he still had a wicked heart. Because when you think you're something, you're really nothing to the most high. We have to abase ourselves being in this truth. Um, so because there's this desire to understand and see prophecy, he had to believe or the angel was not going to waste his time showing him things to come. That was the first thing. He had to believe. No angel is going to waste their time coming down here to talk to you if you ain't ready. That ain't their agenda. The message already goes out that you're ready. So by the time they get to you, that you better be ready to accept what they got to give you. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter five, verse thirty-three. Second Ezra chapter five, verse thirty-three. And I said, Speak on, my power. Then said he unto me, Thou art sore trouble in mind for Israel's sake. Lovest thou that people better than he that made them? That's why we always catch ourselves when we say things about Israel. It's the Most High who loves Israel. Okay? We can, can't even come close to loving Israel like the Father can. 
in the book of Ezekiel, there's a whole chapter how the Most High loves us, man. It's just so prophetic how he loves us. Verse 34, and I said, no power, but of very grief have I spoken, for my reins pay me every hour while I labor to comprehend the way of the Most High, to seek out part of his judgment, trying to find out how is he going to bring destruction. 35, and he said unto me, thou canst not. And I said, wherefore, my power, whereunto was I born then? A while was not my mother's womb, then my grave, that I might not have seen the travail of Jacob and the wearisome toil of the stock of Israel. That is us. And he said unto me, number the things that are not yet to come. Can you all do that? Can you number the things that are not yet to come? Then he says, gather me together the drops that are scattered abroad. Can anyone do that? Make me the flowers green again that are withered. That's resurrection. Can you do that? He's talking about prophecies, and even in this questioning, Ezra still can't perceive what he's saying. Open me the places that are closed, like the Garden of Eden, and bring me forth the winds that in them are shut up. Show me the image of a voice, and then I will declare to thee the thing that thou laborest to know. See that? So when he says, show me the image of a voice, do you know the image of the voice of the Most High is Jehovah Shai? That's the image of a voice. He is the word. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. But Ezra couldn't even understand what he's talking about. He's talking about a future prophecy when he says, show me the image of a voice. He said, this is going to be a mystery. Ain't nobody going to figure this out. The Most High is going to send his son on earth. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High. Framed by the word of, or created by the word of the Most High. See that? Through faith. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So Yahweh Shai was framed, and then Yahweh Shai framed the world on the word of the Most High, which was Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to Second Ezra, chapter five, verse thirty-seven. Open me the places that are closed, and bring me forth the winds that in them are shut up. Show me the image of a voice. And then I will declare to thee the thing that thou laborest to know. Let's drop down to uh, verse 40. Then said he unto me, Like as thou canst do none of these things that I have spoken of, even so canst thou not find out my judgment, or in the end the love that I have promised unto my people. What love did he show upon us? He sent the image of a voice. Quiet is kept, which is Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to John chapter 1. Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Most High. And the Word was the Most High. He was the image of a voice. Let's drop down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh, the image of a voice, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Most eyes great. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. The image of the voice was the word of the Most High, which was Yahweh Shai. Colossians chapter 1. So can we all see that? Can we all see Yahweh Shai? Some did. We can see them through the scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature? 
For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, like the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the clouds, and the lightning, visible and invisible, like the angels. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Let's, let's read down to verse 19. There's a lot of meat in this. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So most I put Yahushua in charge. Let's go back to Gospel of John, chapter 6. I hope you all understanding how the Father worked. Do the angel Uriel talking to Ezra. Says he did tell him a lot of things, but Ezra couldn't perceive what he was telling him. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and let's go to verse 53. Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 53. Then Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last days. Talking now in the similitude. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Does so this actual eating his flesh or drinking his blood? No. He's talking about who he is. He's the Hamashiach. It reads, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna. So who's the fathers? During the days of Moses, the 12 tribes of Israel were assembled and went into the wilderness. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. Be that eateth of this bread shall live forever. They never believed in the wilderness. It's the same way today. Do you think? If the Most High gave us an out out of this land, you know what I mean? People would jump on board. It would be it would be no structure going out. Everybody would be trying to exit. People would get trampled trying to get out of here to follow us. So the Most High got to do something special this time. Chapter 6, verse 59. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. So Yahweh Shai existed. So could we see him? Yes, it says our forefathers saw him. They saw the word. They walked with him. They learned from him. They saw the miracles that he performed. They saw his his weakness. They saw his strength. They understood him. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. When I say weakness is when he got beat by the Romans, man. He, he did that in weakness for the children of Israel. And then the strength was when he resurrected. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Who did he preach the gospel to the whole time he was on earth? He said, go not into the ways of the Gentiles, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Matthew chapter 15, he told the woman, I came not, but only for the children of Israel, right? He didn't come for the Gentiles. He came for the children of Israel. I came not for the Gentile, but only for the children of Israel. So when we read this, this is after his resurrection. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 2, by which also you are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, like people in the wilderness. So we believe because our forefathers wrote these gospels for us to remember. It's a memory that we cannot forget. 
we have to remember this in order to get into the next kingdom. Just like the children of Israel that believe with Caleb and Joshua, they believe to get into the next kingdom, what Moses said. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Hamashiach died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. See that? Some are falling asleep. Some believe for the moment. It's exciting to see something different. It's like going to the circus. As soon as you leave the circus, you forgot everything a week after. The Most High said he was going to raise up again, raise us up again in the last days. The word was that example. The disciples believed it, and they also saw it, and they wrote about it. And here we see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that they also saw him in his resurrected form. Let's drop down to verse 11. Verse 11, 1 Corinthians 15 and 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. Now, if Hamashiach be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? How can you say that? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Hamashiach not risen? And if Hamashiach be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also in vain. So we have to understand that the resurrection is true. That is one of the blessings that the Father is going to give to us. That's what he's going to bestow upon us. And he's sending it through his word, through his, what do they call silver surfer? What is he? It'll come to me. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter four. Silver Surfer, if y'all don't know what that is, it's, it's a comic book. But Silver Surfer, before Galica comes, which is supposed to be like an image of the Most High in the comic book, Silver Surfer goes and tells everyone to prepare. That's what Yahushai is. Yahushai came to tell us to prepare for the next life, to prepare for resurrection, to prepare for the kingdom to come. Numbers 14 and 11. I want to take it back to how the Most High dealt with Moses about seeing things and believing. Numbers 14 and 11. And the Most High said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be your they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. The Most High could do that. He's going to take Moses and make a greater nation just out of Moses. He was so tired of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto the Most High, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. The Egyptians would be talking smack if the Most High just wiped us out in the wilderness. Verse 14, And they will tell it, to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, the Most High, art among this people, that thou, the Most High, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day, by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Most High showed them all these miracles, and they still didn't believe. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Most High was not, a, a, not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Little did the Egyptians know if the Most High destroyed the children of Israel, he would destroy the whole world. If he destroyed the children of Israel, I'll say it again, the whole world wouldn't exist. The moon would fall out the sky, the sun would fall out the sky, stars everything that the children of Israel destroyed. That's why we're still here. That's why the 12 tribes are still here. That's why I don't understand why the pastors don't talk about us. 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 17. And now I beseech thee, let the power of the Most High be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, the Most High is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, 
and by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even unto now. And the Most High said, I have pardoned according to thy word. So the Most High can pardon us. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Most High, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. We'll stop at 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and have followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land, wherein too he went, and his seed shall possess it. The spirit that Caleb hath is the spirit that we have to have coming out of this kingdom. We have to have a different spirit. And as you can see, being in the truth, our spirit is different than anybody else. Nobody else has a spirit like an Israelite once we're in the truth. So the Most High is going to come and redeem us from this land once again. So as in the times of Moses, same things stand today. Through his Holy Spirit that was on Hamashiach, who visited us with that same spirit. What spirit? The spirit in um, Numbers chapter 24, verse 18. This is the spirit of Hamashiach came. This is why we have to understand, hey, we ain't going to be here too much longer. What spirit? Look at verse 18. He came with the spirit of long suffering. He came with the spirit of great mercy for Jacob. He came with remissions of sins and repentance of sins for us to repent, but still by no means clearing the guilty who sin. All right? If you if you sin willfully, that guilty that guiltiness is not going to be cleared. Here you know the truth, but you still sin it. Most high is not going to clear it. If you're supposed to be a believer, you ain't supposed to sin. So you're not going to be cleared of that guiltiness. That's why he says in Revelation chapter 22, this is why he says this, Revelation 22 and 11, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. That's why he said that. He will not acquit the wicked, especially when they're doing things willfully. Let them be guilty still. That's why we have to repent, change our ways. Everyone has opportunity to repent and change. Change meaning keep the law, statutes, and commandments, not according to the way that Muslims and Christians do, they change, they repent, and then they go right back into wickedness over and over again. The book of John chapter, uh, let's go to Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29. Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29. And it reads, the next day, John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which take away the sin of the world. So John the Baptist saw Yahweh Shai, which was his cousin. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist wasn't by himself. He had slews of students that were around him. I don't know why when they showed on TV, he always by himself. He had people following him. There was a lot of people that were repenting through John the Baptist. He was preparing the way. They'll never tell you how many people changed. It's just like when Yahweh Shai, they said to keep the name of Yahweh Shai out the mouth and people scattered. Where where all those people go? There's a lot of people had the name of the Hamashiach in their mouth and knew he existed. Peter was quiet when Paul came to visit him. He didn't even come, go out of his house for months in fear. There's a lot of people that knew. People were afraid of the Romans. They had heard about what the Romans did. Okay? They had heard about 
their cousins, the Greeks, what they did to the Israelites. The same people. Verse 31, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water. John the Baptist baptized with water. Yahushua came to baptize with what? He came to baptize with fire. Verse 32, and John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. What's crazy is the first major destruction was with water. The second major destruction is going to be with what? Fire. So this is a similitude to what's coming. It's a prelude to what's coming to destroy the earth. Fire. Verse 33, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record, we are reading the record, that this is the Son of the Most High. Again the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Yahweh's eyes, he walked. He said, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yahweh Then Yahweh turned and saw them follow it and said unto them, What do you seek after? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, Hamashiach, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, Hamashiach. See that? So was he called to Christ in Jerusalem? He was called the Hamashiach. We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted in what? Interpreted in what? In the Greek, the Christ. But he is the Hamashiach. And we are Hamashiachim. Go to Matthew chapter 16. So they knew how they know by the Spirit. You got to be in the Spirit for this for this resurrection. You get out of here. You got to be in the Spirit. You got to be in, in the Spirit to see. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Yahweh came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, because John the Baptist has got his head cut off, right? Some, Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? He didn't disagree with what they said. He said, you know, because he, he could be either one of them, just like us today. We don't know who's who. Remember uh, Elijah and Elisha. Elisha asked for how many portions of Elijah's spirit? He asked for two portions of his spirit. So he would have the spirit of Elijah on him, right? But it's the spirit of the Most High. You get it? A lot of us have these spirits too. Same thing with uh, brothers who have... Um, profound spirit, right? The other brothers that are up under him kind of get this way. Like Paul, he said, follow me as if I, as I follow Hamashiach. A lot of brothers had the spirit of Paul on them. The Most High would dwell with us if we're being obedient and sincere about teaching in the sports world. You have Michael Jordan, you have Ron Harper or Kobe Bryant. You know, they you take on the form of an individual because the successful rate of getting things done, okay? And we see it in many other forms, right? Verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Hamashiach, the son of the living power. And Yahweh answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjana, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So how can we see? The Father has to reveal it. How do we know what's what? The Father has to reveal it. There's no other way to get the understanding unless the Father reveals it to you because you are diligently searching for that. Let's go to Amos. 
Amos chapter 3. All praise to the Most High for us going through the scriptures today. It's always good to go through the scriptures on the Shabbat. Our weeks are hectic. And nobody is talking about the scriptures when we're out and about most of the time. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Wait for y'all to get there. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. And it reads, Surely the Most High will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So when Yahushua said that Simon knew who he was, and he said, you couldn't have known that unless the Father put that spirit on you. Ezra didn't even know the image of a voice. Right? He didn't know that was from Mashiach, but John the Baptist did. He saw. He saw the dove ascending. Simon Peter did. But Ezra didn't. He didn't know who it was. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter 2. And he never broke down, if you read that scripture, he never broke down who that image was. He explained a lot of things to the angel to Ezra. But he didn't explain who the image of the voice was. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 42. These are, those are all riddles. Most I speaks in parts and sections. If you don't understand the parts and the sections, I mean, you'll never understand it. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people. Who is this people? The children of Israel, the multitude. It says, whom I could not number, and they all praised the Most High with songs. Who is this multitude? When we read Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, this is that multitude of the children of Israel. There's 144,000. That's the government. And then you have the multitude of the citizens, which is the children of Israel. Okay? That's the multitude. Verse 43. And in the midst of them there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads he said crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Now, when we read um, the Gospels, does it mention that Yahweh was taller than the rest? Does it say anything of that nature, that Yahweh is taller than the rest? Gospel of John chapter, chapter 18, verse 3. I started two, and it says, And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Yahweh oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men, and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Yahweh, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Then answered him, Yahweh of Nazareth. Yahweh said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which portrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said to them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Yahweh of Nazareth. There's nowhere in the scriptures where it says he was that tall. Why is he taller now? Okay, even in Isaiah 53, it don't say that he would be taller than everybody else. But in this scripture, in Second Ezra, it says that he is very tall in stature. Let's go to Second Timothy. Uh, let's see, the precept. There's the scripture. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Luke 12 and 25. Luke 12. Let me write that down. I really. Luke 12 and 25. It reads, "And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit?" If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? All right, so why would he even say this? Which of you can add a cubit to your statue, meaning another foot to your height? Okay, why is he saying that? Because in the spiritual realm, you're going to be able to add, I mean, your 
physical character and your spirit are two different things. You you can find a brother that's five foot two with the spirit of a giant in him. Same thing with a tall brother. He may not have a good spirit in him at all. But in the kingdom, your statue is going to match your spirit, just like Yahweh Shai. His height matched the spirit here. This is uh, Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 42. Let's go to 43. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned and receive palms. How do we become immortal? By being obedient. Verse 46, Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So this young person, Ezra still didn't know who this was. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Most High. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Most High thy power thou hast seen. But he was that tall young man that was given the crown, and he's crowning those who stood so stiffly. But he saw Yahweh Shai. He saw the image of the voice. And that's speaking of what's going to happen in the last days. Look at um, 2 Ezra chapter 1, verse 36. 2 Ezra chapter 1, verse 36. It says, they have seen no prophets. Who are these people who have seen no prophets? These are people today. We haven't seen Elijah or Ezra's or we haven't seen none of those prophets. First Ezra chapter 1, verse 36. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. How? By reading the scriptures, we figured out that we are the Israelites, and the Most High has been angry with us because we have not repented towards Israel and remembered his covenants. Verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, we have not seen the Most High with bodily eyes. We have not seen Yahweh Shai, but we remember the memory of Yahweh Shai through our forefathers' teaching in the Scriptures. So we have not seen him with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that the, that I say. So we believe. And now, brother, behold, what glory and see the people that come from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonas, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Most High. So this is spiritual. Just like Yahushua said, who do they say that I am? And they couldn't figure out. John the Baptist, same thing. When the Pharisees and Sadducees came to him, they said, are you... Are you Elijah? And he says, I'm not Elijah. He he confessed that he was not Elijah, not even knowing. That's the same thing with us today. We don't know who we are. We know that we're Israelites, but we don't know if we have a quarter of a spirit, a portion of a spirit, you know what I mean, of one of these prophets that have come again. But all of us have some portion of Yahweh's spirit while we're here in this captivity. But if you think about it, so if he made all things and even things in the invisible, what does it take for you to see the invisible? Because we already see everything else. We see the moon, the sun, the stars, the rainbows. If we see all those things, what does it take for us to see in the invisible? That is another atomic level of faith besides seeing what you already see. Like I said, like the birds, the fish, things in the sea. There are some things you can only see with spiritual eyes and understand. 
Yahusha showed miracles. Moses had the opportunity to, to uh, use miracles in the wilderness. But this spiritual things that we have seen in this kingdom, in this captivity, that others cannot perceive. Let's go to Second Kings chapter 6. And let's see a prophet open up the eyes of another prophet to see things that he could not see. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. This is why prayer is so important. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, O oh my power, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Most High opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Elisha prayed that this young man's eyes would open so he could see angels. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19. 19. We can see spiritual things as long as we don't have unbelief. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 32. Therefore, thus saith the Most High, concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Most High. This is the Most High speaking. For I will defend the city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Most High went out and smite in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. The Most High sent the angel one angel to wipe out the Assyrians. So whether you believe it or not, that's on you. But the Most High sent the angel to wipe them out. That's how you're going to do it in the kingdom. Let's go to another place in the New Testament. So we can have unbelief if we want to, but we ain't going to witness the fruits of the Spirit that the Father is showing us. We have fruits of the Spirit, but the Father also has fruits of the Spirit. And this fruits of the Spirit is for you to believe in him so he can show you these things. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Let's go to verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, Herod was an Edomite. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia. Now, the course of Abia is the government of Israel, okay? Uh, the course of Abia, so the Most High had circuits for all the, the priests. This is just a side note for y'all that want to know this. Don't, like I said, don't overlook things. The course of Abia was like a, uh, uh, a uh, so the priests had sections, right? Every priest had an order to do certain things. And there were 24 circuits. First Chronicle chapter 24, and maybe you should mark this so y'all never forget this. This is the circuits of the priest. I'll, I'll read the first verse and then we'll jump down. It says, now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar. Now this order reigned all the way to the days of Hamashiach. Let's jump over to... Um, Verse 6, and it reads, And Shemaiah, the son of Nathaniel, 
the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes and the Zadok, the priest, and Himelech, the son of Abathar, and before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites. One, so it says priests and Levites. Remember that. One principal household being taken for Eleazar and one taken for Ithamar. Now, from 7 down to verse 24, it's going to talk about all the circuits because the 24 represents the 24 elders sitting amongst the thrones of the Most High. But it says, verse 7, Now the first lot came forth to Jorabib, the second to Jedidiah, the third to Haram, the fourth to Saram, the fifth to, to Micah, the sixth, sixth to Miliam, the seventh to Hakos, the eighth to Abiel. Uh, notice that the eighth circuit, Abiel, this is what we just saw in um, Luke chapter 1. Uh, the ninth to Jedi, the tenth to, and it goes all the way down to the twenty-fourth. So the eighth circuit is what we were reading about, and this is a circuit of. Let's go back to Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one, as you can see in verse five, it says the course of Abia. That's the eighth circuit. Let's flip back over, look at the eighth circuit. It says Abia, spelled different in verse ten. In First Chronicles chapter 24, verse 10, it's spelled a little different, but it's the same circuit. So in this circuit, these men had the, it was like it went in sequence. Uh, it rotated. And at this particular time, the eighth circuit had to light incense. That was one of them. Other circuits would do the sacrifices. Other circuits would do the readings. Other circuits would do the prayers. That's how the circuits worked. I started verse 5 again. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, used, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before the Most High, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Most High, blameless. So they were obedient. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before the Most High in the order of his course, according to the customs of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Most High. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without in the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Most High, standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. So imagine that. Imagine you in the house or you in a temple and you light an incense, and then an angel just popped up out of thin air. Why did the angel pop up? For one, he was obedient. And I said, did he believe? It shows right here, he believed. Or the angel wouldn't have never came. Verse 12, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. This is normal. Fear will always fall on you when you see an angel. Whether they be 10 foot, <laughs> I heard about the Miami incident, you never know. If y'all didn't hear about the Miami incident, talk to Brother Barzal. You never know if that's the government or if it's the most high. Never know unless you're there. Verse 13, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Yachanan. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Most High, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Most High their power. So the Most High knows who he sent on the earth. Okay, so I'm going to have to go to my computer on the next verses because my Bible has lost these verses. Um, drop down. We're on verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. So it's telling you right there, he has the power of what? Elijah. 
to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. If you look at Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Most High. All right, see that? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So what happened? That happened. Did the land get smite with a curse? Yes, it did. We were scattered to the four corners of the earth. The curse came. Go to Luke 1 and 17. It says that he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Most High. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of the Most High, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show, these, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. So what happened? (laughs) It's the truth. You cannot argue with the angel when he comes. You just got to sit there and take it. And uh, you could talk to him, but you can't sit there and say, no, that's not going to happen. This man is, I mean, this angel is not wasting his time coming to talk to you, right? He's coming here to drop a message on you. These angels ain't dealing with no unbelief. If you don't believe what the scriptures say, you might as well be damned, right? That's what the scriptures say if you eat as the scriptures said in Romans 14, 23. That's why you must ask the Most High to help you uh, when you pray with unbelief, help you with unbelief. Whatever your problem is and and not trying to believe wholly, ask him for help on that. Um, Let's go to 1 Corinthians. I mean, you think Ezekiel had that feeling when he saw the angels coming down? In Ezekiel chapter 1, he saw chariots coming down. He said, I saw them, and he, he didn't waver. He sat there, and he was recollecting and storing that in his memory when he saw those angels come down. Same thing with Zechariah, in chapter, Zechariah chapter 5. He saw the angels. He saw how they went out on their missions. You think he had unbelief? No, he believed every word that he was saying. There was uh, another prophet. Check this out. Um, Bell and the Dragon. Look at how he hit, look at how this prophet hesitated with this angel. Quick. And when you hear Bell and the Dragon and Susanna, that is the thirteenth and the fourteenth chapter of Daniel. There's fourteen chapters of Daniel, and those are the other chapters that belong in it, but they put them in the apocrypha. Bell and the Dragon, chapter one, verse thirty two. Bell and the Dragon, chapter one, verse thirty two. Excuse me. And if you wanted to link this with Daniel, this would be part of the sixth chapter. This would be like another chapter, right? Because it's it's picking up right where Daniel was in the lion's den. Uh, But verse 32, and in the den there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them to the intent they might devour Daniel. Now, if you do a study on lions, most of you would know that lions don't eat every day. Lions eat once a week. They digest their meat, just so y'all know. But they don't eat every day. They fast a lot. Verse 33. Now there was in Jury a prophet called Habakkuk, who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. So he was giving charity to the homeless. Verse 34, But the angel of the Most High said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. So he's going to feed Daniel while he is in the lion's den. (laughs) 
verse 35, and Habakkuk said, My power, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. You see that, that hesitation? He hesitated. Verse 36, now watch the angel. Then the angel of the Most High took him by the crown and bare him by the hair of his head and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. He snatched him up and just took him there. He didn't have time to talk. Verse 37, and Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, O Daniel, take the dinner which the Most High sent thee. <laughs> and Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O power, neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel rose and did eat, and the angel of the Most High set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. So that can't happen to us? We can't end up in Jerusalem that way? You see how he snatched them up? You see how he took them back on? Don't underestimate the Most High. The Most High has destroyed armies with one angel. The Most High has the power to do it. He shut up Zechariah's mouth until John the Baptist was born. For nine to ten months, this man couldn't even speak. Power of the tongue. For ten months. But then he could speak again. Never underestimate the Most High's power. He created all things. All things. So the things that we see in the spiritual, it's because of your belief. If you witness things that no one else is seeing, it's because of your belief. Okay, so we see things all the time being in the spirit. Just like we're going to see Yahweh Shai once again. Just like Job said, when I awake, I shall see my Savior. Even Job knew he was going to see Hamashiach. He knew more than Ezra knew. He knew he would see his maker again, which was Yahweh Shai. The Most High gave him the power to create. All praises. Um, to all praises, I'm going to end class with that. I mean, actually, let me go to one more chapter. Let me go to First Corinthians chapter uh, 9. This is a good, humbling chapter. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, and it reads, I'll start at 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Let the Most High take care for oxen. We are likened to oxen. Verse 10. Or saith he it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. This was written for us. That he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of the hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Now, we're going to witness things that are part of the curse while we're in the spirit here on this earth. Like I said, we're dealing with curses all the time in this land. You know, I went to AAA just the other day. I paid for the service. I've been paying for that service for over 20 years. And uh, I had someone else's registration. They asked me to take care of it, a oh, little old lady. She couldn't get there, so I took her stuff to AAA to register her car. Walked up to the counter. I ain't going to say the nationality of this individual, but he wasn't of the 12 tribes of Israel. He told me that I couldn't do it. I had all the paperwork. I had her ID. I had her registration. I had everything that he needed, plus my membership. And he would not let me pay for the registration. That's all I wanted to do. The next day, a lady of another nationality went down there, got the sticker with no problem, brought it back to me, and I said to myself, what in the world is this? People judge you off your skin tone. You don't have to say nothing. They will judge you off your skin and not even help you because I could have took it a step further and took that sticker to the very guy that didn't help me and say, hey, someone else gave him a sticker. could have been a different person altogether. Everyone's different. But I had to let that go, right? That's part of the afflictions, dealing with people, 
dealing with the heathen in this captivity, that's part of the affliction. Okay, you you blow out a gasket, <laughs> going back to do certain things that you really shouldn't do. Be at peace with all men, even if they're ugly towards you. Be at peace with all men. Let's go to verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Hamashiach. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Most High ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. But though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's the important, important part of living, teaching the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if I against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Hamashiach without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Don't abuse your power. This power is great. Uh, verse 19, for though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And that's when I said dealing with the heathen, you got to be at peace with them. Whatever's going on in their little mind, having attitude and racist attitudes, you got to let that go. Don't let that affect you. Verse 20, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. That's how we have to be towards Israelites. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without the law to the Most High, but under the law to Hamashiach, that I might gain them that are without the law. That's to our brothers who are not in the truth. To the weak became I weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might be all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know you not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the price. So run that you may obtain all praise to the most high. So this is what we have to strive for. We got to run in this race with humility and a contrite spirit. We have to establish charity like a bucket. Right? We gotta be steadfast on our belief, can't hesitate. We gotta know that Yahweh Shai came for our salvation. He's bringing salvation for us to reap the benefits of all the work that he's done. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna end this class. I hope this class was a blessing to you, brothers and sisters. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land. 